Hey all, in this video I'm going to take a look at Thunderhawk Operation Phoenix for the PS2. Now just before I get into the game, I just want to give a quick shout out to a chap on here called Sean from the Retro Balls channel. Now Sean actually very kindly sent this game to me and he sent it off his own back what's more. So a massive thanks bud, I really appreciate it. And uh, just to show my appreciation I'm going to review this game. So, what's the Thunderhawk series all about then? Well, you're essentially given control of an attack helicopter in which you must complete various military operations all in the name of giving a middle finger salute to global terrorism. Now, the Thunderhawk series was developed by Core Design with the first game appearing in 1993 on the Mega CD to pretty much critical acclaim. Um, in fact, I think I can remember reading in an old issue of Mean Machine Sega how the game a apparently sold to something like 70% of all Mega CD owners in the UK. So following that then, the sequel, Firestorm Thunderhawk 2, was released in 1994 for the Sega Saturn and soon afterwards for the PlayStation. Now Thunderhawk 2 would be one of my all-time favourite 32-bit games and a game that I actually still play every now and again. Um, I used to love the simple seek and destroy gameplay and the game featured an incredible soundtrack as well. So how does the 2001 release of Operation Phoenix hold up? Well, having completed the main campaign, I'd say pretty good overall. There are four main campaigns to complete set in various world locations, with each campaign being broken down into uh, numerous other missions. So prior to the start of each mission then, you're given a mission briefing, which explains what exactly you'll need to accomplish. It kind of helps to stay awake during the briefings, so that you don't end up flying around aimlessly trying to figure out what's going on. After each mission briefing then, you'll be taken to the weapons menu screen, where you get to kit out your chopper with the necessary firepower for the job. Personally, I tended to stick primarily with the lock-on Firestorm missiles and the 50mm cannon, but in some missions you will need to equip bombs for taking out particular structures or runways. The gameplay in Operation Phoenix is mostly of the arcade style variety, but it does go a little deeper than that too. It's possible to wade into a situation all guns blazing, but all too often you'll be downed pretty quickly or take serious damage to your armour. Alternatively, you can lock on to the more dangerous targets from a distance, picking them off one by one and then flying in to clean up the weaker targets with your cannon. So strategy definitely plays a part in the gameplay. There's also plenty of variety in the mission objectives too, which range from escorting convoys and aircraft to targeting specific structures or providing defensive cover from advancing enemies. Also, the missions can take place during the day or night and in various weather conditions, such as rain and snowstorms. The controls in Operation Phoenix take a little time to adjust to, but feel responsive and satisfying for the most part. In terms of graphics, Operation Phoenix isn't the best looking PS2 game ever, but neither is it offensively ugly. It looks like the developers have struck a balance between graphics quality and frame rate. You get perfectly adequate graphics, married with a game engine that runs very smoothly. The game does have nice explosion effects and the vapour trails from fire missiles look cool. The game offers up three perspectives from which to view the action. A third person view, cockpit view and a first person view. My personal favourite is the cockpit view 
if only for the ornament that dangles in the top left hand corner. It kind of adds some light comedic value in amongst all the carnage and destruction. Sound effects appear to be present and correct. Weapons fire has a suitably impressive sound, particularly the main cannon on the nose of your chopper. When fired, it sounds like you're packing serious firepower, rather than a measly pea shooter that's been sellotaped on there. Unfortunately though, the soundtrack is a bit of a letdown. While it fits the action well and is suitably tense, it's mostly forgettable and nowhere near as good as the soundtrack used in Thunderhawk 2 on both the Saturn and PlayStation. Having completed the game, there's not much incentive to return for a second playthrough, mostly due to a lack of unlockables. The game does rate your performance in each mission with a score, but this would probably be unlikely to draw the player back either. Some of the mission objectives also can be slightly confusing, while some can spike in difficulty, adding to player frustration. Also, one other annoying aspect to the game is that whenever you die, you're forced to traipse through the mission briefing and weapon select screens every time, which also involves sitting through some medium load times. Overall though, I thoroughly enjoyed the game, and if arcade style flight combat games are your thing, then I definitely recommend checking out Operation Phoenix. So once again, a massive thanks to Sean for sending the game on to me, and please check out the Retro Balls channel, run by Sean, James and Simon. So yeah, until the next video, take care.